Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm your Crypto Sensei and welcome back to the Satoshi Club. Now, in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about is Bitcoin a hedge against inflation? Why or why not? It's a very detailed discussion. This is a topic that will will be discussed, you know, years and years from now on until at some point Bitcoin does potentially become a hedge against inflation. So to answer the question that you're going to probably see in the title right now, no, it's not a hedge against inflation but it could very well be in the future. And if you want to find out how, well, stick around until the end of the video. So if you do enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to Satoshi Club, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, comment down below if you have any questions for me and let's get right into it. First of all, with a little explanation of what exactly is Bitcoin for those of you that don't know. Now, I'm sure that a lot of you didn't even know that Bitcoin has their official website, right? It's a little explanation of what Bitcoin actually is, how it emerged, how, you know, over the last 15 years, people, corporations and governments were trying to destroy the whole infrastructure. But it is not possible because Bitcoin has something that a lot of other cryptocurrencies out there don't, which is an underlying value. Now, the underlying value of Bitcoin is the fact that it is powered by electricity. So the only way to actually shut Bitcoin down would be if you shut down electricity for the whole entire world. Just a fun fact, nothing to think about too hard. And, you know, that's a little explanation of Bitcoin. It's the first crypto out there. It's, it's the largest crypto out there. If you head on over to CoinMarketCap, you can see that it is the first spot in the list of cryptocurrencies, as you can see, with a price of around 24K and a market cap of almost $500 billion. Now, what is inflation? That's my second question for the day. You guys probably heard of it before. You can see it on the news. You can see it on the Internet. Inflation is a rise in prices, which can be translated as the decline of purchasing power over time. Now, here at Satoshi Club, I will be introducing certain economic concepts to you guys over time, such as inflation, such as economic growth, such as you know exchange rates and all of this other stuff that you should know if you want to be a successful, uh, first of all, investor, but also if you want to have a macro nice little glimpse of the whole market. So basically what inflation is, is when a unit of currency effectively buys less than it could have in the past. And basically it means the purchasing power fell down while price levels rose up and uh, it's basically the rate at which prices for goods and services rise. There's a few economic terms on how inflation can come up. So you have three types of inflation, demand pull, cost push, push inflation and built in inflation. Demand pull inflation is when there is so much demand that the well, I could explain this to you using charts and stuff, but in general, it means that there is so much demand happening in the economy that demand is making price levels increase because there's just so much demand. Imagine everybody wants to buy a uh, you know certain type of car and then everyone just starts outbidding each other and that's what happens. The price level just increases. Cost push inflation, on the other hand, is from the supply side. It is when you know you have a lot of suppliers who are uh, not able to lower their prices enough and then basically, you know, as uh, supply shocks happen, for example, if a hurricane happens or something and they're unable to make uh, the same prices as they, as they did last year, you know, inflation is going to happen as well and so on and so forth. The main way to measure inflation is with the consumer price index or the CPI. So you should keep that in mind. And one last thing about inflation is that property or stock commodities such as stocks and a lot of these other things are actually benefited by inflation. So if you hold a certain basket of assets that have a tangible value behind them, you will probably make some uh, money as inflation comes up because it's going to increase the value of your assets. Now, you've got to be careful, though, because if it is a bubble, it can crash at some point completely pop and, you know, fall back down to almost zero, such as uh, it, it did happen back in 2008 with the housing market crisis. But let's move on to the question of the day, which is, is Bitcoin actually a hedge against inflation? And the answer is currently, no, it is not. So you all know what happened back in March of 2020. And right here, I have two charts to compare. It's the chart of Bitcoin with the chart of the top 500 stocks in the USA or something that represents the stock market. And what happened since March of 2020? Well, a lot of, uh, you know, pumping of money into the economy, a lot of printing of money, a lot of stimulus checks. A lot of this stuff has been going on. But in general, price levels overall rose since March 2020 all the way up until May of 2021. Right. It's very nice, very clear and very logical. And it happened both with Bitcoin and uh, you know, the stock market as well. Now, let me just explain one thing to you. These increases in price were as a result of inflation, right? It is basically inflation. It's not as a result of inflation, but it's happening as 
uh, you know, the price level is obviously increasing, being pushed by inflation. And what happened after that is rate hikes. So countries, central banks, such as the Fed, such as the European Central Bank, they all wanted to start hiking rates. So they would start controlling inflation slowly because once you hike rates, people will tend to, you know, save more money than they actually want to consume. And it will sort of uh, ease the price level a little bit, which is, uh, you know, a completely normal thing to do. So then what would you expect Bitcoin to do if it were a hedge to inflation, right? Well, you know, as the price level started dropping for the stock market, the price level for Bitcoin should have at least kept uh, a stagnant level, right? But that did not actually happen, which uh, proves to us that Bitcoin is currently not a hedge against inflation. Now, in the case that, you know, the market keeps falling, it's just going to prove this point. And the one thing that you have to understand is that Bitcoin currently is not uh, a hedge against inflation. And, uh, you know, the whole reason why people thought that it could be a hedge against inflation is because it has a capped supply, 21 million, you know, scarcity, all of this stuff. But it doesn't really just work that way. Uh, Bitcoin instead is just a risk asset, same as the stock market, and is currently completely correlated with the Nasdaq, with the S&P 500 and all of these largest indexes in the USA. Now, let me just tell you one thing. So the question that I answered to you at the start of the video was, is Bitcoin actually a hedge against deflation? I said no, but it could very well be in the future. And the one case where it could actually be a hedge against deflation is in the case that the total cryptocurrency market cap rises to a level about 10 times as large in this as this one right here. And I'm not talking about Bitcoin. I'm talking in this specific case about crypto as a hedge to inflation as a whole. And if we do get crypto, uh, to increase in total market cap so much so that it does reach the market cap of gold for example it may very well be a solid solid hedge against inflation because gold gold doesn't really lose value i mean we can check it out on the chart as well if you just type x x a u u s d uh, you'll find you know gold and if you look at gold you can see that over all of this time on the weekly time frame we have seen a steady and constant increase in price of gold all the way since december of 2006 that means that even though we've had inflation in the past period of time gold is still keeping a relatively nice price level now the reason for that is first of all people trust gold it is scarce but second of all Next to scarcity, you need to have size and volume. And gold has a market cap of $11 trillion, whereas crypto at this point has a total market cap of $1 trillion. So in the case that crypto does exceed the market cap of gold, which I fully do expect to happen at some point in the future, I just can't tell you when. Well, at that point, crypto may very well be a hedge against inflation. Now, next to gold, you know, just a key, few key takeaways at the end of the video. Uh, treasuries are, in fact, a better hedge against inflation than gold itself because government bonds are more secure and they also have been shown to pay higher rates when inflation rises. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you found some insight in this whole uh, story about Bitcoin, gold, inflation and everything else going on. Um, this was your crypto sensei talking about is Bitcoin a hedge against inflation? And once again, the answer is currently no, but it may very well become in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video on Satoshi Club. This was another uh, gem for you all. If you did enjoy it or if you do have any questions, make sure to check out the comments below. Type something. I'll be sure to respond to you in a timely manner and leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I will see you all in the next video.